Ladies and gentlemen, subscribers and patrons, good evening. Let us look a bit more and dig into Spring Boot, GraphQL, multiple queries, because we kind of scratched the surface the last time in the last video regarding um, GraphQL and Spring Boot. First of all, if you didn't see that video, of course, go watch that. It's awesome, but um, I'll just tell you how to create this project anyway. It's, it's quite fast. So you say new project like this, spring initializer, give it a good name, choose Gradle or Maven, doesn't matter. And then you need to find GraphQL. And what you actually get is Java for GraphQL. So it's, it is the, the, the Java GraphQL or GraphQL Java module that you will actually have when you are done with that. And of course, you will also install your, your usual modules like Lombok Web and the APA maybe, uh, also in his two database maybe. Um, yeah, and then the next thing you need to do is you need to go to your resources folder. You need to create a GraphQL folder and then you need to place a schema file in here. You need to have at least one type named query like I have right here. This is where you define your queries. If you call, if you name this something else, then you will get an error when you try to start up your Spring Boot application. So don't do that. Um, then you have your type definitions underneath right here. So this means that if you're using any types right here, like I am, I'm using spaceships. Then you have to define, of course, your spaceships in the same uh, schema right here. Now you, you can also use enumerations. That's why I, I added this destination enumeration right here. That's just to show that, that you can also use enumerations. So we have a spaceship with an ID, a model, a captain, a fuel, and then a destination right there. Cool, cool, cool. And then what we saw in the last video was that we could actually bind this. We could map this to a controller, a spaceship controller, and also a greetings controller. So right, right here, it's not a REST controller because REST and GraphQL are two we're very different approaches to actually uh, supply information and actually to supply an API uh, that can do stuff. Um, GraphQL is actually kind of a something you would put in front of a lot of um, a, a, lot of, a lot of services and a lot of integrations that you have in your backend, and then your client can then ask this GraphQL gateway um, what kind of information does it want and which queries does it want to execute. While with the REST API, you would have to run multiple queries. To get the to get the data that you need with a GraphQL API, then you can actually say, I want to execute this query, this query, and this query, and you need to have those arguments, argument four, three, and two, and then um, and then uh, yeah, then you will get all that data returned in the same um, in the same response. So that that is a cool part of uh, about GraphQL. It is it is a bit more advanced than than uh, than REST. So you should have, you should just bear that in mind also when you choose whether to use GraphQL or REST, and you need to maintain the, the schema file. I would actually say that that is uh, kind of the biggest downside. I would say that you have to maintain that schema file, but it is it is it's not that it's not that bad actually, and it gives some kind of it gives a lot of structure to your um, to your uh, to your API. So first of all, here we have query mapping. This comes from the uh, this comes from the GraphQL uh, packets right here. And we also have an argument. So this is the greetings right here where it says hello and happy new year too. And then whatever name we put in right here. So that was one uh, query that we had. And then we have another query right here. This is a spaceship. So we can actually give an ID right here. And in a normal situation, of course, you would fetch this from a database. I'm just creating a new sp spaceship every, every time. And I'm using these hard code values uh, because I just want to show, I want to focus on the GraphQL part, that's why. So, and uh, I'm creating an, an, a new spaceship with ID right here. The captain's always Mike, it's always fuel 99%. The model is always nice and it's always going to Mars or like that. So now the question is, how can we create one query and how can we query the Spring Boot application, which is already running, by the way? How can we query that so we can both run greetings and we also we can add, we also want to run the spaceship. Uh, we also want to we want to run these two queries right here. Why not the third query also? Because I've actually not created the the Java code for that yet, so uh, we have to leave that out. Or I have to I have to code it on the fly. But we have these two uh, working uh, queries that actually work, so we can of course we can call these two right here. The last time we saw that if we that we have to do some uh, things, we have to create a JSON file to actually to query something, and and we have to yeah we have to apply a query like this, and then again we have to write query once again. This is because we want to run a query, and then we actually have the GraphQL query in this part right here. And because it can be a bit difficult to know 
um, to know the structure of this, especially to begin with. When you have done this a couple of times, then you know exactly what to write. But in the beginning, it's a bit difficult. So install the plugin named GraphQL and then create a GraphQL file first, where you can sit and actually, um, actually you'll get some code completion right here. You can see I can also uh, query the spaceships if, if I want to do that. Um, so I, I, get a lot of, I get a lot of help uh, by doing that. And then when, when you're actually happy with your... Um, uh, with with your uh, with, with with your queries, then you could just um, place it in the structure right here. So here I have a query greetings to Mike, and then um, that's it. It just needs to be in this JSON format right here. You have to take this part right here and put it in the right side right over here. So just just so you know that. Let us try the simple one first. That was the last thing we did in the uh, in a previous video. So I will say curl greetings right here. I have used, I'm using package.json files because then I can just press play instead of me typing all of this stuff in the terminal. And uh, then I can just press play. And then look, now we have the result right here. The data is, uh, for, for, yeah, the data is, here we get a greeting message. Hello and happy new year, 2023, Mike. And as you can see right here, it's very it's a very structured response. Usually, when you create REST, you will not have this kind of. Um, you can, you can, of course, have. You can have. You can have this uh, response if you want to, but usually you would have a less structured response where you just get whatever information that you that you need. Um, so, uh, but this is one of the benefits from from the from, uh, from GraphQL. Now let us try something different because we saw this last time. Yes, it's cool that we can actually get this um, this return. Now let us try to. Um, now let us try to curl. Well, let us try to yeah, run a GraphQL query with multiple queries, and that's exactly what I have prepared in this file right here. So again, I start with creating a GraphQL file so I can get some code completion help, and again we can choose something else right here. All right, Susan right here. So and then we have the spaceship. So this is my query. I give a spaceship with the ID 20,000, and then I am having this curly brackets again, and then I say which fields that I want from the spaceship. It is possible to get the fields with something called introspection with GraphQL, um, but else this is, some, this is uh, one of the things you would read in the, in the documentation, actually, which fields um, can you get from this, uh, right? So that is, uh, so sometimes you would also get, the, you would actually get the schema. So many times you would actually get the schema and then you can go look and, and, at the schema and say spaceship. Ah, there's a model, there's a captain, there's a fuel and there's a destination. Okay, let, let, let me actually get all of these, right? And then you copy those and go you go to your multiple GraphQL right here, and then you add the fields that you actually want to, maybe also, yeah, a fuel destination, maybe you also want the captain right here, right? Then when you're done with that, you go to your JSON file because you need to post JSON. Uh, yeah, that, that's, what it, that's what the Spring Boot, uh, uh, so the Java GraphQL uh, plugin understands. So you need to post this to... Um, to, to your Spring Boot application. And here we have query, greetings right here. And as you can see, you, you, you actually do not need new lines. You can just make a space, a space is sufficient. And then we have the spaceship query right here with ID 20,000. Right now I don't have any fields, so let us just add captain and fuel. Yeah, let us start with that. See if it works, then we can add some more fields later on. So I'll go back to my package.json file right here. Then I'll say curl multiple. Let's see what actually happens. Look, here I have the data right here. Uh, let me just copy this to another file so we can see what's going on. So here we have the... I can create a results new directory. JSON results. And here we can say this is the uh, example. The multiple queries. JSON. Because then when I paste it right here and press save, then uh, the, the pretty formatter, or the just the JSON formatter in the IntelliJ will actually make it look uh, quite nice. So here we have the data. We always get a data. Then we have a greeting. Then we have a spaceship right here. And here we have the captain and we have the fuel percentage. Cool, cool, cool. So now let us try to add the destination to our query. So we'll say, I also want the destination. What else could we get? There was captain, there was fuel. Let me just look at the model. Okay, let us get the model. Model and let's run again. 
And I can already see the result right here, but I will pretend that it's the first time that I see it when I paste it over here. Wow, look here, it says again, uh, now we have a spaceship and now we have destination Mars and we have model nice right here. So that's that's quite cool, right? So that is um, that's an example of actually querying, uh, yeah, query, uh, doing multiple queries in the same uh, HTTP request. Awesome, awesome, awesome. But Mike, what about all that introspection that you talked about? That is also cool, and I've prepared a little bit about that uh, with, with that. But if you are very curious, then go to graphql.org, read all of the documentation there. Yes, there is a lot, but if, if you want to start a project, if you want to start a project that uses GraphQL and you haven't done that before, I would definitely say read the documentation. It does not take that long, right? It's maybe a, it's an hour or two, right? So, but it's still, um, I would say that, that that's a must if you are creating any serious project. Or at least skim it, at least, at least skim the documentation so you know what's possible. Because that, it, those these queries right here, right now, I've created some quite, um, I've created some quite easy and simple and static queries right here. You can actually create a lot. Um, you can create queries with variables and you can use if sentences and stuff like that inside your queries if you want to. But read the documentation, then you have something. Um, then you have something for the weekend, right? So <clears throat> Saturday evening, uh, read up, right? I might make video more videos about GraphQL. Yeah, I probably will because there are so many things to it. But um, let us just let us round this off with the introspection because introspections are very very, uh, very interesting. So because if I go to introspection, then I can actually say, please give me the schema and please give me all of the types inside that schema. So this means we can actually query the schema. Let's say that someone forgot to give us the schema, then we can still go and introspect the schema. We can still go and list stuff in the schema. We just need to use the same uh, same format as, as last time. We need to have a query right here. And then the, inside the query, we can use underscore, underscore schema. As soon as there's something with underscore, then you know, okay, this is introspection. Now we are trying to now we're trying to fetch something from the actually from the GraphQL schema on the server, actually. So that's what it means. So let me just go to package and then introspection right here let's see what happens right now yes we got a lot of stuff right here so i'll copy this and should i just oh yeah i'll just do right this one right here and what happened now why can it not format it correctly what's that way uh, I'll just try again. Copy. Paste. It's because it, it yeah, it created some space. It, it It's copying some spaces there. That's a bit annoying, actually. Yes, yes, yes. So let us just put all of it on one line. Yes, so now tabby. Okay, so here we can actually see the type. So we have all of the built-in types like booleans, distant, uh, destination, that's my type. That's an enum, right? And then we have the ID, that's a built-in type. Then we have the query, also built-in type. Spaceship, that is one that, that we created. And then we can see, we can also ask for directory, uh, enum values, uh, fields, input values, schema type. So all of the ones with the underscore, underscore, that's uh, the ones for introspection. That's one way you can get information about the schema that uh, or the API that you want to query. I've prepared one more, so you can actually see here. We, here we will actually get a list of queries. You can see red type right here. This time I give an, an argument which is name query, and here this time I say I want some fields, and now I want some information right there. From, and I want the name and the description. Let us see how the result looks to that name. We can also get description i don't remember if i actually made any description maybe i did actually yes yes i did yes i did or did i we'll, we will know now this is the last query right here let us try to run that so and if you want to try this out yourself and you it's something you don't know how what how to do then just take my project from github i will replace it on github as usual so here we go again Paste, save. Look what we got right here. So these are the queries. We have a greeting query, description null, 
We have a spaceship query description null. Spaceships with S S in the end. Spaceships. And that is also has a description of nulls. And let us look at the schema just to see if that is actually true. Of course it is true, but um What we, I just want to see here, we have the queries. You see, we have the three queries right here. What I would actually also like to do, to do what I would actually also like to get the fields inside. I don't know how to do that. Um, of course, I could try and uh, I could go with a try and error and then I'll figure it out. But uh, if you know how to do that, then write in the comments. Yes, I'm trying to lure you to write some comments, but that's okay. So, but this is, um, this is what I've had planned for today, actually. What about description? Can we? Can we add a description somehow? This is the thing. How do we add descriptions to this? Is this because I need a, is this a description? Let me just check right here. Um, readings are always, are most, most of the time, polite, polite. And then we have, then we have like, get, get one spaceship. Ah, cool. Mm. And then we can write, um, not implemented yet. Not implemented yet. I think I've not, I've not tried this, so this is just an experiment. Um, this is just an experiment to make the video a little bit longer, so it will figure, so, so, so it will rank higher in the, in the YouTube algorithm, right? Um, and then, let me just go to, application right here and then we say restart yes stop and rerun let's see what happens now let us see what happens now so let us try to press play let us look at all of the queries let's see what happens yes 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 i was right i guessed right i guessed right of course of course of course course if i just had one euro for every time I would. I've been right this week. Then I would have at least two euros. So that's really, really good. That's really, really good. Um, this is the. This is the data, and now we have the description. Greetings are most of the times polite, and of course we should remove the spaces in front and in the end. So that is okay. So we actually also now we also we learned <laughs> yeah we learned something here yeah, that's actually quite good we learned that um, these remarks in the top right here they are, these are actually descriptions and th those will actually be saved in the beginning I just thought it was like a Java doc just for like yeah GraphQL documentation and of course it is when it is description but it's actually saved in the description um, field so that that's quite uh, interesting and um, nice to nice to know thank you so much for listening to me place a comment give me a like go become a patron and get my cool coffee mug if you are diamond uh, patron yes thank you very much i hope to see you again soon and uh, have a great evening bye bye